Hi, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to talk about Swift generics. They are very powerful and an easy way to actually write very flexible functions and types that can work with actually any type subject to the requirements that you define. So let's get started with an easy playgrounds example here. And to get started, I have just opened up a little playground file here. I can remove anything that I do not need. So we have a completely blank playground. And when we're talking about generics, then you most likely have already worked with them because in fact, much of Swift stand library is filled with generic code. For example, let's create an array. So let's say an integer array and a Swift array or dictionary types are both generic collections. You can create an array that holds integer values like we do right here. Let's say two, three, four, five, eight or seven, nine, 10. Oh, 12, 15, 16, or 21, whatever. All of these are integer values, but we could also create an ABC array that holds a bunch of strings. So let's say we have A, we have B, we have C, D, E, <laughs> F, and also G. So this is also an array, but Swift can figure out what kind of type we've used. So in that case, we have used an array of strings. And in this case, the first array, this is an array of integers because this is a generic collection type. Similarly, you could create a dictionary to store values of any specified type, and there are no limitations on what that type can be. So for our example that we'd like to discuss in this video, I'd like to create a little function and also show you how to write generic functions. And our goal is going to be to find the index of a specific letter in our ABC array. So let's call this function find letter index. And to do that, we should give this a parameter. Let's call it array and define it as an array of strings. Also, what we should add here is the letter that we're looking for, which is also a string. And since we're interested in the index, I'm going to return an optional integer in the case that we don't find the letter that we are looking for. And there is a linear approach to this. It's very simple, not very efficient, but we can still go with this approach. We can use a for loop and we can define an index and an element um, that we're looking for in our array and we call the enumerated function on this array. And as you can see, this enumerated function returns a sequence of pairs of n and x, where n represents a consecutive integer starting at zero, so an index that we can work with, and x represents an element of the sequence, the sequence being our array. And what we have here now is just a simple for loop or for in loop. We are iterating through our array, but we're also getting this index that we can work with. And we're actually just interested in looking for the element and compare it to the letter that we have defined as a parameter in our function. And if the letter is equal to the element in our array, then we have found it and we can return the index of this element. And if we had no success iterating through our array, then what we can do is return nil at the end of our function. Um, and with that, we indicate that we did not find the letter that we were looking for. So now we can just call the function find letter index. We are specifying our ABC array. We are looking for, let's say, the letter F. And then we should get, as soon as we click the run button, we should get the result of our function, which is five. So this means that our letter F is at the index five. So let's count zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this function definitely worked. Now here's the problem. What if we actually want to find a number, an integer in our integer array. Let's say we're looking for the number 12 in our array. So let's try that out. Let's say find letter index. Let's pass along our integer array and also let's find the number 
12, but now we should get an error saying that we cannot convert a value of type array of integer to expected argument type of array of string. Although we would do the same thing, we cannot use the same function. So it would be cool if we could create or make this function more generic so that we could work with any type. Wouldn't that be great? So, and now let me show you how this works. We've already talked about the approach that we took to actually find our element in our array. And I've told you that this is a linear approach to that problem. But what we are looking at right now is actually the same function that we've just written, but in a generic way. And there are some differences. And what we see is that our function uses a placeholder type name. And this is actually the uppercase T in our case. And we're using that instead of an actual type name, such as integer, string, or double. And the placeholder type doesn't actually tell us what uppercase T should be. But in this function, it does specify that both our array and our key, this could be the letter or a number, should be of the same type, in our case, uppercase T, whatever T represents. But the actual type that replaces this t is determined each time a function or this particular function is called. And yet another difference between a generic function and a non-generic function is that the generic function's name linear search is followed by the placeholder type name t inside angle brackets. So the brackets tell Swift that t is a placeholder type name within the linear search function definition. And if you want your definition to be a little more specific, as I have chosen to be it right here, then you can also add a so-called type constraint, which is actually the colon followed by comparable. And this constraint specifies that a type parameter must inherit from a specific class or conform to a particular protocol, in that case, the comparable protocol, so that we are able to to use basic comparisons such as less than, equal, or not equal. So let's see how this looks in our playground. So to continue, let's first of all remove the second function call that doesn't really work in our playground. And then let's just copy the whole function that we've already written and pasted right below the working function call. And now we're no longer just finding a letter. We're performing a linear search, just as you've seen in the presentation. And now to actually work with um, placeholder parameters and placeholder types, we're defining our type parameter in our angle brackets right after the function name. And now th this uh, placeholder type can be anything really. You could pass along everything, but this also means that you do not get support for certain things. So what if we actually want to compare two elements or an element from our array with the element or the key that we're using right here, then we should at least be able to compare these things. And therefore, we're using a so-called type constraint. And we are actually making sure that our type, our placeholder type, supports the comparable protocol. So we're adopting the comparable protocol. And if you're having a look at the documentation, then you see that conforming to the com uh, comparable protocol allows us, for example, to use the equal to operator. And this is very important for us. So this was the first step. We're now having this generic parameter. And we can now specify that we are no longer interested in just using strings in our array, but we're using our placeholder type, our type parameter t for the array type. So we are now having an array of any kind of possible um, type that conforms to the comparable protocol, like integer, like string, and so on. And we are also no longer interested in a letter, but much more a key, because we want to look for numbers, strings, and so on. So no longer is this a specific type string, but the same type 
as the array elements, which is uppercase T. And the rest doesn't change. We're still returning an optional integer. We're still using our for loop. And we're still comparing something using an if statement. But no longer do we compare element with letter. We are now comparing element with key. So we're checking if the element in our array is equal to the key that we are looking for. And if that is the case, we're returning the index and this is your first generic function. Isn't that cool? It was so simple and yet very powerful because if we're now having a look at this function, we're calling linear search on our integer array and we're looking for the number 12 and we're running this code, then we're getting the result seven. And indeed, our number 12 is at index seven in this array. And we could use now the same function using linear search going through the ABC array, which actually is an array of strings. And for example, look for the letter F. And again, let's run this and let's see the result. And we are at index five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. Indeed, we have the correct result. And we are now having just one function that can solve our problem of finding an element in an array, whatever type it actually uses, as long as it is conforming to the comparable protocol. And if you're now completely into generics and want to learn more about them, I've added a article in the video description below, which gives you tons of more information about generics and working with protocols, for example. And I thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel to not miss any future tutorials. And I'll see you in the next one.